<laughs> a pirate skeleton? Really? <laughs> you have a problem with that? Oh man. Uh, well, see, he's got like skeleton warrior outfits and everything, so I don't see how the pirate's too far away from him. I mean, his quiver it doesn't even make sense. He he doesn't have any arrows in it, and his arrows just spawn out of you know when he shoots him from his bow. So <laughs> it's fine. It'll be fine, man. I promise. It'll be fine. Once we get through with it, man, you like it. You like it. Here, let's move this guy over here, and we'll move our wheel over somewhere else. There, so people can see it. I see, like the the thing that that we were thinking about when we were looking at the at Clinks and uh, set for Clinks, is uh, his his actual model and his sets are he's really little on screen. So anything that we're gonna make for him, uh, we really wanted to make the shapes and silhouettes, and even the colors really contrast each other. So you could really make them out, even though he's like one of the smallest heroes in Dota 2. Uh, so with our pirate. Uh, design and the things that we decided to make for the pirate set uh, we came up with the silhouettes and colors that really you know you can see from very far away see let me take off the wireframe I mean some of the features kind of get a little bit lost on the default clinks but even our model without any textures right now you can see those items really se separate from each other you know we see the big huge glove uh, cover for the pirate gloves his hook we really made sure to emphasize the big, large uh, boots, the pirate boots on him, which will be brand boots from Dota, and the do rag going over the the wheel, which is gonna have metal uh, framing on the outside. So I think it's gonna be great in game once we, we get through the sea brush and the texture, and uh, all those things are really gonna come together. Sir Tofan, oh, you like the Abaddon mount? All right, man. <laughs> One out of two is not bad. We'll take it. <laughs> Make it like he was drowned and eaten by a shark? What, the pirate clinks? <laughs> Avagar went up to the headless horseman and said, I already answered that question. You weren't listening. Or you went AFK or something. Uh, we still are holding on to it. Uh, we're, we'll try and push it as a live workshop chest uh, when all the tools and everything's ready for Source 2. But that and like eight other sets that Valve really, really liked are on hold because they have all these special stuff like extra bones and cloth things and all these special effects that we built into into those sets and animations and uh, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of good stuff coming. Sir Tofa, uh, Tolan, uh, you're not sure if the pirate clinks but get into the game? <laughs> Alright man, well we're gonna try our best and we'll see where it goes. I think it's got a good chance. Maybe the coat more of a bluish, like his default type. Well, he's he's more like a like purple, like very very purple. Um, and I don't think the colors are you know really matter for his sets. Uh, all these other sets that have come out for Klings have zero purple in them. They have like browns and yellows and uh, yeah, they don't they really implement the the purples into them. And Valve didn't have a problem with that. So that's actually why I'm covering up all the purples with our own loin cloth piece and our own boots and our own gloves. And we're really uh, making the pirate design come through. So that's what's up, man. Yeah, I know, I have a girl. No worries, I already answered your question. Yeah, I, I don't think for Klinks is that big a deal. I mean, those th you don't really see even the purples that much on in his game character. Um, I don't know if it's the materials or the lighting into the game, but you don't really those purples don't really jump out anyways. You know, you see mostly the uh, the fire on him and the whites more than anything. And then everybody like nobody has the default clinks anyways from the games that I've, from all the games that I see. So everybody has like this brown color on it. So it's brown, white, and some yellows on him. Which you know, so we're still in the the color scheme for him, even though we are able to change them. You know, that's it's, it's so, you know you you don't have to stay too uh, close to them for all the all, for all the sets. And we haven't for a lot of the, for some of the ones that have gone into the game as well. So, um, 
if it's a good rule of thumb to go by is if you change the colors a lot then don't change the silhouette too much from the hero and vice versa and then you'll be in a safe safe place for valve yep okay uh so we have a super rough version of the code in zbrush let me switch over here there we go Uh, let me check something real quick, hold up. Uh, yeah, hold on, I gotta change something here. Uh, okay. Should be good. Alright. So this is our first subdivision. Uh, where we started kind of blocking out some of the folds and wrinkles and some of the holes and the alphas where we're going to cut up the coat so you can see more of the legs and the boots. So the coat itself is not going to really cover him as much as you guys saw on the uh, on the low poly. Uh, so yeah, right now this is super rough. Uh, the coat, This coat part up here is a complete mess. I'm pretty sure I'm going to clean this up a lot on the next subdivision and make some better wrinkles because these are just kind of... Um, very random, and I don't like them. But yeah, more than anything, it was more uh, kind of ripping away the the edges so that we get that super worn, super old, decrepit skeleton feel across the the coat. Because the coat itself is gonna be like a, a darker shade, anyways, so it'll make the other pieces of him really stand out in contrast. So what we're more interested in in the coat section of him is. Uh, the silhouette and the silhouette includes the alpha that we were going to be creating for uh, all these holes in this coat and this part didn't mirror across but ignore it it doesn't matter we're only worried about this side so yeah it's still pretty rough still pretty sketchy uh, but as we go into our next subdivision we'll clean all this stuff up make it look really really solid Not a custom face. Uh, the custom face that you're talking about is just for the Chinese version of Dota. Uh, his, he has a head item, which replaces the horns. But if you're using, if you're like you're in China and you're playing China Dota, then the face and I, I think even the body actually. What is it, body too? Or maybe just a default. But I think that he's got a different body and a different head, so he's not a skeleton. Uh, yeah, so he looks really, really different. But all the items will fit on him the same. Ah, Citorlin, you're liking it a little bit better already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not even with colors in, man. Don't worry. Um, I, can, I, I like I know what it's gonna look like in the end, so uh, you just have to watch and see how it comes together. All right. Actually, at this point, we can probably go into our next subdivision, unless this thing's part of it. Is this already part of it? It is part of it. Okay, I should probably start maybe smoothing this out as well. I haven't really touched the low-end cloth. I want to take off symmetry for this. What are we at? 25. Let's lower that a little bit. And... Lower our smoothness to about 60. Looks good. Okay. I want to go to the next subdivision and then try to clean this up, it'd be a freaking mess. The higher you go in subdivision, the more polygons you got, the harder it is to change large volumes of, uh, of polygons. So you want to get rid of, you want to, you know, get, knock that stuff out early. Uh, this part, what do we do with you? Actually, before I forget, I'm going to turn on our auto masking. I should really save this thing on. It messes with your shit. And as I'm cleaning this, quads from our super super low poly stuff I'm gonna kinda brush in a little bit of the design of the low end cloth I smooth this stuff out so we get some volumes at the same time and I don't have to do two things afterwards
sketch this stuff in real quick. And then we're going to put a, continue putting a lot of holes into this section. Now unfortunately this section won't actually have the alpha on it, but we'll just make these guys uh, really go into a, kind of a black color in the texture. Because we're, we're hiding the purple loin cloth right underneath it. So that's why we can't have the alpha. But it'll still look good. Make some of these folds go into this alpha here, that'll look good. And the other one will pull up. Keep the detail of the folds uh, a little bit large, just so we can see it. Because he's a tiny little dude. In dotes. Uh, the tooth idea pixel? Uh, yeah, we'll still try the tooth idea. Somebody mentioned last show that uh, putting a silver tooth in one of his huge teeth might be cool. And for the avatar view, that's the only, the only time you would really see it. Uh, it'd be really cool for there. So we might try that. Uh, if we can find those extra 12 polygons, which I think we can do. Alright, we're going to have to cut into this a little bit. Being a little bit of pain in the ass. Uh, next division will actually make some nicer wrinkles, but this will fill in for now pretty okay. We're gonna sketch them in, make them look like crap, but it's gonna help us later. They work in ZBrush. Throw some volumes in, design your, your shapes, and then make them look better into the later subdivisions. So don't worry if it looks like crap, it's supposed to. Supposed to, man. Pushing some clay around. Now we can't push the cloth too much into the back because it has the lowering cloth behind it. Even though it doesn't really matter because it's not going to be there when we bake it, but just so the normal maps are a little bit more accurate, I'm not going to push this cloth too far into the back. I'll do a better job sculpting this and cleaning it up into the next subdivision. Right now I just want the volumes in here, kind of sketched in. Nothing too fancy. Uh, we're also going to start Tying the crap out of this with more holes. So let's see down here. Uh, probably another another hole into the corner, and then some little smaller little guys, maybe into the edge. Nice alpha there. This is not tiny, tiny is a rock. Oh my god. Surprised that wasn't an abyss joke. <laughs> hey, what's up, Ungrateful? Welcome in.
Ah, oh, thank you, man. It's it's pretty early on, but uh, you'll you we'll, we'll polish this up and make it look really nice. <laughs> it's always weird, like uh, new people that jump in that are not haven't seen how uh, ZBrush stuff is created, and they look at it at, at like at the first glance, they're like, "Hey, man, that's looking kind of rough." Dude, man, we just started. Give it some time. Uh, I'll fast forward the song a little bit. There we go. Maybe we want to push the weight a little bit more in this direction too, so... Can I go over what I sculpted a second ago? More decrepit, not so... St stiff. Make this, this cloth pieces flow a little bit better. And a little bit different. One more diversity in the way that they're folding, instead of just loop loops loops. Yeah, that's a little better. Oh no man, it's not a pain at all. I just have to explain it sometimes, because people don't realize. But I, after they're, they're spent like, you know... Uh, 40 minutes in here, uh, and we progress through that same ZBrush sculpt into the next subdivisions. Uh, they get the building process of doing uh, step by step and starting with volumes, and then refining all the details into smaller sections each time you subdivide and you move across the mesh. And they see it progress that way and they get it, right? So it's all good, man. I'm used to it. Use uh, Mudbox instead of ZBrush. Uh, I actually got started on Mudbox and then I transferred over to ZBrush myself. Uh, but yeah, yeah, Mudbox is great as well. I just uh, like ZBrush more, and that's why I transferred over eventually. It had a lot more uh, tools that I that I enjoyed using a lot. Even though the UI was a nightmare to get used to and learn and all that default ZBrush complaining stuff. Uh, let's see, where will we sketch some more of these holes on him? So I do want to keep the, the tattered bits a little bit lower on the loincloth so that they kind of contrast the coat a little bit. It doesn't look like one one flowing uh, the same fabric or the same piece. So uh, I'm going to keep the holes a little bit lower on the on this side, um, deliberately. I think that should work pretty good for this subdivision anyway, so we can clean it up in a bit. You just got the steam event for this? Oh, I have a girl. So for the steam events, I set them up uh, so that they come up twice. So first one we actually start streaming and are gonna start soon, and then uh, I, I set one to, to come in 30 minutes after that. So you should get two of them if... Uh, uh, well, you, you, I'm sure you got the first one too, you just didn't see it, but yeah. For that reason I set up two, because sometimes people miss it. For the people that join our Steam group. Uh, ungrateful. Yeah, the UI is uh, very, very different. Um, I wouldn't say the worst. I think the worst is Maya. I hate Maya's UI with uh, passion. It's just horrible. Um, ZBrush is just very weird from any other 3D program, so it makes it really difficult to wrap your mind around it. As well as some really weird like things that you think to be default, like having groups in your sub tools or the way you save a file. You know, like those things make it more uh, difficult to get into, even more than the actual placement of the UI.
the original flowing cloth. So the, uh, I'm gonna make it so that those alphas are actually uh, like going to a really dark color instead of being alpha. So it looks like holes. You know, like I can use like a very dark green so it goes with the, the some of the values from the ground a little bit better. Uh, so yeah, the, there won't be an actual alpha channel for the loincloth, but I'll texture it with some colors that make it look like it's see-through. Should be good. Oh, Elge, Maya is a piece of shit. I hate it. I would not. I would like. I would use it minimalistically um, at at my last studio, and I still. I just used. I was like, I think there was three of us that used soft image. And I was the only like artist that used it. Uh, the other guys that used it was one of our guys was our lighting artist and programmer, and another guy I, I don't know what. Oh, he he was at ILM. He wasn't even with our our, Luke, our Lucas Arts group. So yeah, but yeah, there was like three copies of Soft Flash and Lucas. <laughs> oh, this guy's got to pull out. Get some volumes here. Some wrinkles. Don't worry about the pixelation. It's gonna look good in the end. This is just quick little volumes. Oh, knock it off, Seabrush. Knock me around in this viewport. Oh, dude, soft image is a shit. I mean, there's everything about it is done so clever. Like I, the, the very first thing, whether you're working on verts, edges, or triangles, uh, no matter what of the three you're using, if you right-click, uh, you get only the options that you can actually do with your selected polygons. Everything is just like thought out for speed. And like sub Ding, you know, everything's just fast and on the mesh and oh man, it's just everything. Everything is great. That's just two quick little modeling examples, but it's just wonderful. Alright, let's see if there's anything else that needs a little attention before we go into the next division. Actually start cleaning this thing up. It's a little bit of a mess right now. But still, it's just a, a initial sketch. I think that we started polishing a little bit of it to see some flat sections. See that starts showing up really, really nice from the top view, which is the most important view for us. And ignore the pixelation on the thing. That's that's gonna be alpha at all this stuff back here. So just ignore that. It's just pixelated right now because of the level of subdivision. Uh, but yeah, see top view starts seeing those folds really nice. And then we're also gonna be adding some party kind of lining across here so we'll do something like this with a nice uh, silver button or something and we'll run that across uh, the front of his coat uh, you know like here and here and there I'll do that here and across the other side too so those little silver buttons will really stand out when we put a metallic texture and material on it uh, when we get to to the textures should really stand out, It'd be really nice. I also pull away the loin cloth from the open coat at the same time. Uh, you prefer 3D Max, easier to use? Uh, no, I mean, you're just used to 3D Max, I think. Unless you have used actually soft image for a long time as well, but if you haven't, then I think you're just used to 3D Max. Because I came from 3D Max, I used 3D Max like for many years at another studio, and then from there I switched over to soft image. Studio, Sabrina, you troll. How's Maya in comparison? Uh, I would I would use 3D Max over Maya. <laughs> Maya is just so 
uh, overly used through uh, schools and uh, studios that it's the most popular. But it's, in my opinion, it's not the most best popular because it's better. It just got established a lot more. Kind of like League of Legends. I should not have said that. Now there's gonna be this whole conversation about it. <sighs> Can't help myself. Cubit, Cubit Joe, Cubit Ho. Can't say your name, man. We're going with Cubit. I like Cubit. Thank you, man. New to the Twitch channel? Oh, cool, man. I don't know. Uh, I can't hear the follows anymore. Uh, with this, with our placeholder uh, X split until we go back to OBS once they release the new version of it that works with Windows 10. Uh, but yeah, I can't hear follows unfortunately. So if you follow, thank you for the follow, man. I appreciate it. Cedric, you're not wrong about. Lo I know I'm not wrong. I just want to start that fire, you know, in the chat. <laughs> yeah. See, mistaken devil. What's up, man? Thank you for the follow. See, I don't, I don't hear those no more. Do you guys hear the follow sound for that? You guys probably don't hear it either, huh? Yeah, I don't know what it is with, uh, with XSplit. It, it, it won't play the sound for that no matter what. It plays them for donations or for subs, but not for follows. I don't know what's up. Maya's always in development. Uh, it's always playing catch-up, actually, to every other program out there. Fuck Maya. Alright, let's see, where are we in this thing? I think the boots are actually part of this subdivision as well. Yep. All right. So yeah, it's a good thing we didn't subdivide. I got some loose little bits here. Uh, let me hide the rest of this stuff. Otherwise, it's gonna get really annoying. Whoops. Oh, come on now. Whoop. And we'll just hide the top section there. Oh, did I have part of the boot on the right side? I think I did. I meet. Uh, okay. Put our symmetry. The red, the red boot doesn't really matter. Stage right, but I'm gonna keep it on there just so you guys can see it a little bit easier. See, uh, get the the full sense of what the boot's gonna look like. So, uh, before we go into the next division and keep detailing the crap out of the coat. And the loin cloth. Uh, I actually exported all these pieces as one it, because they actually share the same item slot for clinks, which is the shoulder slot item. Uh, so I almost forgot about the boots being part of it. So we're gonna get rid of the quads right now and then we'll sculpt a little bit of volumes and um, folds into this party boots. Uh, let's see, what would I do to this thing? I'll probably put a fold going across this way or something. Exaggerate this fold as much as possible. Ooh, but not too far. Uh, as we get rid of the squads. Maybe these guys go a little bit too close together. They're looking a little too symmetrical, too close to there. So I'm gonna kind of smooth this guys out over here. Start pulling this guy the other way. Create some different folds on the boot. Something really sketchy. This part is just almost like a blueprint of where you're gonna go with your detail afterwards. Right to the... Right, yeah, I want to keep this guy nice and large. 
make sure we can see them. Oh, that's Emperor Kappa, of course. Hey, Mr. Vigil. Vigil? Vigil? Hmm. I think it's Vigil. <laughs> no, that stuff's not working anymore, Sabrina. I have to take that off. Ariel, welcome back. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Where did the credits go? Abyss told them all. Please submit all your questions and anger Aim all your anger towards Abyss for your credits being gone. Um, I don't worry about this stuff, looking kind of bubbly. Right now I just want the volumes. You know what? Uh, I need to uh, forget. It. I'll walk around it. I'll just work through it. The hell happened to this thing? Let's get rid of these quads really quick. Werum is getting up there really fast, holy shit. A thousand already? Do I have too many credits being handed out? Is that is that the problem? <laughs> I don't... <laughs> hey, yeah, where has been Serena for? And welcome back, Mr. Forget. Ah, there you are, dude. Uh, we uh, shipped out your prints, I think. Uh, anyways, I, sh I signed them and they were in Mr. or Mrs. Uh, Pink Ninja's possession uh, I'm not sure if she uh, she sent them out yet but soon 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 bud So basically yell at her if you didn't get them. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Can we go back then talking shit about 3D Max? Or Maya. Or LOL. Or religion. I'm always up for that. <laughs> uh, Gubata, what's up, man? Uh, how would you sculpt really tight creases like the area below breast or ampids? Uh, you always struggle with that. Uh, creases underneath breasts or armpits. Hmm. I 
don't have, uh, let's see, do I have an area that might look like a bottom of a breast in here somewhere? Here, actually we should really save our work before I move forward and we really need to clean out that boot, but yeah, it's super sketchy right now, we'll fix it. Let me see, let me save this for a second and we'll do a quick little... Let's see if I can do a little a, a, a bit of a breast here for you. This is gonna be the weirdest thing ever if somebody just joins the channel right now and is like Are you sculpting breasts on the code of clinks? Yeah? So what? You don't like breasts? Now, what you have to remember too, uh, well, I mean, I'm gonna go into anatomy uh, class here and start ex explaining the uh, curvature of uh, the actual, like, uh, spine and the ribcage, and then the breast sits on top of that. So most people draw, like, a breast just completely round and everything, and uh, that's only with fake titties. Um, the breast actually has weight to it, so you want to put a little bit more of that, that fat uh, towards the bottom of it, and it really flattens out as it gets... Uh, as it's, it attaches towards the ribcage and uh, those those tendons and muscle fibers and everything. Uh, but anyways, we're not supposed to be concentrating on the breast. You're just worried about the section underneath it that then attaches to... I should have like, put the breast uh, higher up so I would have more room to do a little bit of the ribcage, but I don't really have room for the ribcage now. First, let's get a little bit of that volume that I was just talking about. Uh, probably need another subdivision for this shit, but it's alright. We'll just move forward. Get that weight in here. Yeah, I need more polygons. It's a really awkward area to be sculpting a breast. Okay, that's not too terrible for a super quick sculpt of a torso. And I'm not gonna get into details about the top, I mean I could keep finessing this and make it look correct, but whatever. We'll just move on to the bottom section that you're concerned about. And it's, it's actually really easy, dude. I, I usually just use a couple of uh, the same wrinkling tools that I use for everything else. It's just a matter of... Uh, Finessing them uh, the right way. Alright, so we'll do another subdivision here. And smooth this out a little bit. Now that there's more polygons for the breast. The polygon is not the greatest. Uh, you can see some of the verts going in different directions. Or not in the directions that I actually have them go. I actually use a uh, better place for the topology for it, but whatever. I'm not gonna worry about that for now. Alright, so that's 
Uh, it's not terrible, but it's not great either. Anyways, let's worry about the bottom here. Uh, we'll do a little bit of the rip cage to start poking through. So you do start seeing a little bit of the rib cage here, depending on the the body weight of your female. You want to angle that out. And so I'll do another subdivision real quick, just so I can show you after you get your main volumes, which should be a lot better than this. You know, it's there's weird vertices everywhere because we're we're putting it on a coat. Uh, but usually you can do, grab like a damp standard tool or even your orbs crack tool uh, to start doing some of your wrinkle work. If you know if the breast is actually the, large enough to create that that section you're speaking about, um, you're gonna start you know that skin's gonna start folding a little bit uh, over the underneath section. Oh crap! Come on, seabrush. Play with me. Uh, so yeah, depending on how high or how heavy the breast is, you'll get different different lines and different uh, weights for the cleavage. So you can just start like kind of pushing this section. Increasing it a little bit underneath the breast or the armpit that you were talking about. And as it wraps around the rib, ca the rib cage, uh, you'll start seeing for uh, heavier set breasts um, a little, uh, little bit of the wrinkles of the skin pulling the breasts. Not quite this drastic, but you know, you want to make it drastic at first so that you can then smooth it out a little bit and then maybe even start sculpting a little bit of uh, extra folds uh, from the skin doing that and then you can smooth it out a little bit so it's not as drastic as cloth you know this is skin but I mean you still see it a little bit and then after that you can go in there with a really light slash tool or orb crack and actually you know push those wrinkles a little bit more, a little bit like your inking line that we do a lot here with our with our models. And then you can start doing the same thing for underneath the breast. Oh, this area got really messed up. Really weird. And I mean, this is really, I mean, I sh this should be another subdivision when you start doing the wrinkles on all that stuff. I mean, you can still see a lot of those quad polygons on here, but um, it should, you know, once you get more detailed into that section of doing the, the, the wrinkles, uh, you shouldn't be able to see the this kind of, this amount of polygons and pixels that you see in, in this cut area. This is where we start really rounding it out the breast. It's a little bit messed up because of that my poly count. And you can use your move tool if you're a little bit off. Or if your topology does not you know really allow you to uh, get it perfect. Put that out a little bit. Alright, that's, that's looking pretty alright. I mean, um, at this, with this, I mean, there's not a, a huge, huge breast. So you wouldn't have like extra folds down here, really. They usually are uh, fairly smooth, you know, into the rib, the rib cage starts pulling that skin right back out. So it really depends on the weight that you want to convey for that, that bottom section of the breast. Uh, but yeah, I should smooth out towards the corner, the, this right side of the ribs. Because it gets, you, this is where the rib cage starts really showing through. So you really want to add the weight uh, to the side. Oh crap, I smoothed it way too much, but anyways. Um, that's the idea. And then yeah, if you're talking about the armpit, the armpit has a, a way larger cavity underneath it. So you want to really start pushing that cavity and pushing the, the tendon and the muscles that go over top of it. Uh, if when your arm is open, right? So 
uh, you make sure that this this huge cavity right here you start pushing that across and then doing the same exercises that I just showed you to do the uh, the, the really tight wrinkle lines for the, the tighter sections or yeah like right I, I should have done that example over here instead of destroying our breast yeah like uh, over here right and these guys would go all the way um, a lot of people sculpt their breasts really high up on the chest and uh, they're actually a lot lower than people realize uh, so yeah this would be like way over here her armpit would start over here somewhere and then her actual muscles that are underneath the breast and all those tissues uh, her rib cage, uh, her rib rib cage would continue all the way around here these volumes and uh, we have to like erase a whole bunch of crap over here all these all this coat is getting in the way so yeah there you can start seeing the rib cage and uh, this really weird sculpt that we have going on now uh, but yeah the actual muscles for for the the um the, her chest uh they attach they, they would go all the way like underneath the breast and this direction over here and they would uh, actually go underneath the breast, they ignore that I'm going on top of the breast, and they attach to the solar plexus here in the middle. All the way up here to the, her clavicle. And then her shoulder will be up here, and then her other bones and whatnot, and there's your armpit. And yeah, that's how our muscle works, we'll go across this way. And tendons for her shoulder. And then the deltoids, and then you keep going and going and going and going. But yeah, there you go, man. Super quick little tutorial for you. Sculpting the underneath section of a breast on a, on the the pre the decrepit coat of a skeleton warrior. Welcome to the live workshop, guys. Oh my god, why am I saving this? Oh, are we saving the? Oh my god, I'm saving the room. All right, whatever. Anyways. Back to our, back to our boots. <laughs> yeah, I didn't sculpt the nipple on purpose. <clears throat> what the hell did I walk into? Yes, exactly. <laughs> hey, Davian, what's up, man? Hey Crud, welcome as well man. And Elge, what's up guys? Doesn't matter, boobs. <laughs> yeah, I figured that would come up. Whoa, 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 I didn't promise, Sabrini. You're putting words in my mouth. I said I would try. But if I have to do it by hand, that's a lot of people to go through, and that's the kind of time I don't got. <laughs> oh, awesome, goodbye. Awesome, awesome, perfect. So there you are, man. Yeah, I didn't make some huge breast. I made something uh, average so that you could go, you know, in either direction with the little tips that I gave you on how to do the underneath uh, wrinkles and the weights. More than anything is what people have the most trouble with is adding weight to their sculpts. And breasts are, the sculpt of a breast has a lot to do with the weight and uh, making those shapes look realistic. Okay, uh, where were we? Our boot. Let's continue with our boot. And I'm gonna hide this again. It's just getting in the way. And this boot looks like total crap right now, but that's okay. That's okay. We're gonna we're gonna get rid of the quads from our low poly version first. 
and then we'll make this boot look really, really nice. And while we get rid of the quads, I'm gonna do two things at the same time. I'm just gonna sculpt in the, the base, uh, wrinkles and uh, kind of cloth folds for this thing. Get them out of the way. I mean, it's probably a little more continuous, closer to the middle. Try and separate this guys as well. Oh crap, you know what? The left side is actually mirrored to the right side on the texture, so we could make room for all three things to fit into the shoulder item. Uh, so, oh crap. Uh, so this side, actually we're not gonna sculpt. Whoa, almost forgot about that. So I'm just gonna flatten the crap out of this so you guys don't think that it's just a crappy model. Uh, we're actually not gonna work on it on this part. So I'm gonna get rid of these volumes really quick. That we so ah my tablet. People don't think that they're actually something we're gonna do. And then we'll just do the sculpt on the right side. Oh god, what's happening, ZBrush? Same with this side, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. Stay away. And then on top of that, I always just put X's on the things that are gonna be mirrored. So people can just ignore them. Be like, where are those X's? Oh, we're not, those, those things are mirrored, so we're not actually sculpting anything on them. More straightforward than just looking like crap. There's X's on it. I'm not doing it. And yeah, I think the mirror line goes right up to there. Alright, that's good because these volumes are actually looking better than the right side, the other side, so worked out. And then uh, we'll open up uh, some reference for the brown boots for Dota 2, because those are the kind of boots that we're going to be sculpting on our clinks. Because the uh, and well, I mean we, we added this little like covering so that they're, they're more piratey to go with our pirate clinks. But we will kind of try to uh, do a little bit of shout out to the brown boots, the Dota 2 brown boots. Gemma Kika, welcome back, man, to the subs. Loving the support, man, for me. Welcome back. Thank you. 
enjoy your Gandalf dancing with some hobbitses. Thank, thank you. Hoorah! All right, so those are decent volumes. We're uh, obviously going to be making some flatter sections. This is a uh, harsher material. And then uh, the boots. Let's look up at the brand boots while we uh, do those. Um, while we soften up those squads and start sculpting the folds for them. So let's see. Dota 2. Brand boots. And let's see what kind of things we can do. Okay, I gotta show you guys this. This is shop, yeah. Look, this is like the creepiest Meepo integration into an image I've ever freaking seen. <laughs> freaking Mona Lisa. I'm not sure why Eddie Murphy shows up on here. Uh. Boots of speed. What? I know the wiki usually has like all the different versions of that the boots have gone through. So I guess that is their their uh, the actual name, Boots of Speed, but everybody just calls them brand boots. I don't know what to tell you. Oh my god, there's so many different I older version of items. Holy shit. Holy shit. <laughs> this is just like a random Timberland boot. <laughs> what the hell? Okay, sanking with a uh, in a bright boot. That's actually the a more accurate size of a scorpion, I guess. That'd be pretty freaky. See that in your boot, your brand boot. All right, all the other pictures just getting silly. Yeah, I guess that's that's the best brand boot we're gonna find. This is the current. These are the other versions. It looked like it was thicker before. What they change? They made it flatter, less wrinkles, less highlights, and then it was like more desaturated, more yellows in it, and then it was facing the other way, and it was just closer up. It's crazy how items change. All right, I'm gonna save that file. There we go. I'll close that. And we're gonna open it and keep it on top and zoom in so we can all see it and actually since we're modeling on the other side of it I'm gonna flip it uh, where's my flip boom all right and we'll keep that over here behind my head so we can all see it oh man okay well just looking at the well eh, no, we can still keep it party like this with these folds uh, the one thing I will add though looking at the pirate boot is the stitching that it has on it so I'll bring this guys in all the way across, but none of this subdivision uh, into the next one, I think. And we'll mask out the bottom so that we don't go over it like we're doing here. Since we decided to sculpt this all in one mesh instead of separate meshes. Let's save our work. Uh, mesh is visible. Oh, that is so freaking annoying. It's like, I might corrupt your file if you don't know hide that shit. Why? I don't... Uh, anyways, oh, my boot's taking over. This is making my boot. Right. Did I make it to the international last month? You couldn't make it? Yes, man, I was there. We had a booth and we're sending uh, free prints from a live stealer set that we are working on. And we had uh, like a whole bunch of our sets behind me and a computer and a laptop I set up so people could play with them and see them in motion while the special effects and the crazy long cloth piece on our Legion Commander Spartan set and all, all the special effects for our Chaos Knight and everything. It was all in game working. What are my thoughts on the new alliance? The new old alliance? Oh, dude, I'm happy for them. I'm, I'm friends with a few of those guys, so I'm super, super happy. And hopefully they can uh, they can go back together and be the old alliance, man. I'm, I'm cheering for them for sure. 
And I have other friends in other teams as well, so I just, I'm not just a crazy Alliance fan, but I do have a, a few friends on there, so uh, I like them a lot. Oh man, I missed the ESL stream. They, they, that was that was early today, right? The Alliance game on ESL. Yeah, I missed it, man. I was sleeping. What about Team Secret? Team Secret got like a whole bunch of new guys, right? My hair's coming through. If you guys are freaking out, it's like, oh my god, there's hair! There's hair! Circuit got uh, Eternal Envy, Poppy, and uh, Weeha. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then uh, they announced a new team for um, Cloud9 as well. Completely new team, I think it is. If I'm not mistaken. It was against the Scrub team, though. Ah! Ah, uh, okay, Cedric, got it. And some Fnatic stumped the other team as well. Ah, uh, oh well. Alright, let's hide this shit again. Oh my god. Woo. Okay. Actually, we don't care about mirroring really anymore with this side since we're not modeling this middle section, anyways. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and hide this crap. Oh, Alright, we'll take off mirror. Screw it. Screw the side. Worry about the one side. Let's go. Uh, let's see, what do we do with you? I guess I'll keep it a little bit flatter in the middle. And we'll still do that harsher uh, wrinkle. But just so it's got more of that loop. A more, A little bit plainer. And then we'll keep the... More of the bulginess up here at the top. Just to get a little closer. Yeah, we'll still keep some folds on here. This middle section goes into a mirror. So I'll smooth ah I'll smooth this stuff out so we can get a little bit of the same volume. So I wanna get like a weird line going in the middle. And I'll sculpt a little bit across as well. Make sure it's smooth when we bake it out. Make it a little bit more Convex, concave, and kind of flip the way that the wrinkles will go then. Make, make them go the other way, we'll kind of flip in the, like a height map. smoother smoother and just keep the larger wrinkles and then uh, we'll add those little details get the nice shout out to our boots of speed I'm calling them brown boots I don't care fired version
Since we flipped the other side, now I gotta make these folds kind of work into the front. So just kind of redoing it real quick. That's okay. Thank you for saving right at that point, Seabrush. That was great. We'll flatten all that up a little bit nicer after we get all the volumes down, which look to be pretty. Th eh, that's alright for now. <laughs> uh, they really should have kept Arteezy. Uh, on well, I don't think he. I, I mean, I don't know how it went down, but I'm guessing he's the one that wanted to go to EG. I mean, th that whole thing seems really weird that he jumped around and then that they kicked that dude from EG and brought him back in. It was, I don't know, man. Kind of, kind of weird. Uh, ungrateful. Uh, well done, man. I don't know how you got my email, but I uh, joined the display. You're doing good work. Uh, what? What are you talking about? We're talking about the follow up top. Uh, I probably did, dude. I was working on redoing the boot section there for a bit. Uh, let me scroll up and if I can see if I, your question, Elge. I don't see your question, man. Well, what does the biz use for FX? Is this optimized also? No, so for FX for Dota, uh, Dota has its own particle editor. So we do that, and if there's any textures or whatever, I usually do the unique textures and I give them to him. Or we use something existing from the game and then create the effects from those little textures. I mean, they have so many that you can make usually something really good with them. If you know, how, if you're a really good effect artist. Uh, but if not, if we want to make something really, really unique, then we uh, we create our own textures uh, as well. Okay, uh, let's see. Let's smooth out this boot first, and then we'll do the stitching and all that fun stuff. We'll do the boring store the stuff first. Usually how it goes with ZBrush. Smooth it out. Get rid of all these quads. Doesn't take very long. And it's worth it in the end because keep the volumes this, like the same as your volumes for your low poly. So when we finish all this detail, all we do is really bake it out. You know, all this stuff has UVs already. Our workflow is pretty tight. 
so we don't have to worry about anything we just do the detail make sure we're gonna go crazy by changing too much of the volumes but then it bakes out just right and then we can start a texture right after that right after the bakes no retopo or none of that bullshit And everybody's so hyped up for the new tools and, and ZBrush. Like, oh, you can, you know, you can like do the retopo really quick, and you can actually model and all this stuff. It's like, don't, don't even need it. All right, uh, as I clean these guys up, um, I actually, I don't think did I do an engine down here? I probably didn't. That's gonna be kind of weird. Oh well. Um, this lace bottom thing. Well, first of all, he's got like his soles that kind of... We're gonna actually make those soles a little bit larger just so you can see them a bit better. This has got the sole and then it's got this like ankle thing that then wraps across the top uh, which will actually make it go across this top part. Uh, yeah, kind of like that. Just trying to get the size stuff down first, guys. Oh god, what? A little bit larger because our boot is actually larger than the than the brown boot. But again, this is the pirate version of the boots of speed. So we're making them our own at the same time. I'm gonna sketch this in there. A little bit bigger back here. Sketch. Just so we know this our sizing is, is, is gonna work. And wrap around the front there for the next one. Okay. Let's smooth out the rest of this crap. Hey Louise, welcome. I'm doing very very well, man. I fell asleep earlier in the day. I was like, oh I'm just gonna rest here a little bit. Passed out for a few hours. So yeah, I'm super awake now. Maybe I have some NyQuil for later. Oh no! I think I'm out. Yeah. The new Team Secret's gonna achieve the largest lose streak in history of esports. <laughs> Holy shit, man. I don't, I don't think they're gonna be bad, that bad. Going back to South Park. The TV show? <laughs> Alright, I'm grateful. Have a good one, man. Good luck on your, on your uh, what was it? Mud box you're working on? Later, man. How's my dog doing, Mr. Forgetful? Oh, he's good, man. He's laying in his, in his huge comforter right now on his chair. Hey, Alchemy, what's up? You'd stick around, but Briefs is playing some spooky game at the moment. Spooky game at the moment. What came out that he'd be playing right now? Oh wait, he's playing that cartoony game, right? Uh, the Wolf Amongst Us or whatever, where he talks about chicks that are beat up or sexy, and then we gave him shit for a very long time. But anyways, yeah, go, go one, go to your, go to your man, have a good one. Thanks for dropping by, though. Or c coming back afterwards, I'm sure we'll still be around doing some ZBrush. Probably, yeah, uh, I want to jump on the Durag as soon as we finish this shoulder item, which has a coat, a loincloth, and a boot. Oh, it's Until Dawn? Oh, okay, I, th I thought it was still on the Wolf Amongst Us. I don't know until dawn. All right, let's get rid of these quads in the boot. Should be very fast. It's just the boot. I guess we want it to go a little bit. A little detail up here. Round this stuff out. Oh, it gets kind of... 
I guess we have like a large cut going there where the top of the leather meets the bottom leather section. The hard, the harder leather that creates the the sole. So yeah, we'll make some make some folds as this large piece over here is gonna go over as well. So there'll be some nice wrinkles, opportunity for some nice wrinkles there for us. To get rid of this visible quads. And the top is quite different because we're trying to hide the, his crazy pointy boots from game while making our own pirate version of the brown boots for our pirates. Clicks! Okay, so this looks alright. Let's smoothen this out. That's pretty good for this subdivision. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hide this freaking section of clinks. It's really annoying the crap out of me. What the hell is this? Get out of here. And we'll make some make some wrinkles back here as well of uh, the weight that you can see on the uh, right back here. You get a little some of the wrinkles of the leather because of the weight of the boot. But more than anything, we're gonna clean up the squads. We don't want to see them. Put them out. Uh, we'll try and smooth them out with some horizontal lines so that we can start making some of the line work, the beginning of the line work for us. Uh, it looks like there's a couple of them. Uh, we're going to exaggerate the size of them at the same time. Huh. And I, I believe the inside of the boot is mirrored to the outside of the boot, so we don't have to mirror the, this side. So we're gonna do our good old X's later. And you go all the way up here, I believe. Okay, I think we're good. I almost forgot. I really like this song, man. Part of our mix. Great track. And we'll make this look nicer, but yeah, we're just sketching in right now. Sketching this stuff out. Put a nice little weight up here as well for the boot. Nice big fold. Even though most people won't ever see that from the top view because it's being covered, but we'll still sculpt it in here really quick. I think it's like five seconds. All right, all right, and this part is. Uh, let's check our low poly real quick. I'm pretty sure that this is not mirrored. It's just this guy's. Take a look. Yeah, they are unique. Does this guy's get mirrored somewhere? Where are you? Oh, I destroyed them. That's right. Okay. It's for a baking thing, but anyways. Ability draft? What? Dude, I don't like uh, Ability Draft. Oh, it's actually called Layers of Fear. Well, I'm sure Alchemy's already long gone if she, they don't already leave, but... Uh, Layers of Fear. I've never heard of it either. So many domestic violent jokes on that poor guy. Alchemy, if you're still in here, uh, he was asking for those domestic violence jokes. He just kept digging that hole deeper and deeper, man. And I did not hesitate to throw in those jokes myself right at him. It was great. I'm gonna add more music to the playlist. Uh, no, there's dude. The Monster Cat lineup is ridiculously huge. I just have like some uh, mixes that I play often on it because they're actually like the, the very very best of Monster Cat. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean I have like a bunch of other stuff on my iTunes, but I usually default to this Monster Cat because there's a way larger variety of different songs on it that we're able to play. 
Uh, Xyzes, thank you, man. Welcome. No, no, here, check it out. We got different playlists for our Monster Cat stuff. It's just that some of these get a little weird. So, here. This is because you guys opened your mouth. You guys don't like a song, it's because of you. So here you go, we're going on the entire list that I, I, am, uh, I have access to. It's ridiculously large. Okay, uh, that just happened to be part of the remixes that we had. <laughs> The problem with this list, as well, or with a l even larger list than this other list that I have, is that it sometimes has songs that are not actually available for the license, so it'll actually mute either the YouTube video or the Twitch video. And so that's why I'm kind of like hesitant to go into the huge humangos, like the, the, the overall list that they got. Anyways. Oh, so actually, here, here's the thing too. Because of this buckle that we added to hide the other buckle, which is purple from the regular clings, uh, maybe we'll actually move this huge leather strap a little bit higher up on, on this side of the boot so that it works with uh, with, with that extra little buckle that, that we had. Um, okay. Uh, I think I want to kind of hide the top part here. Uh, totally getting in the way. Just gonna be easier. Make sure we don't hide uh, the section that we're actually working on. I kind of club that up. Okay, let's keep uh, getting rid of the squads before we actually do the sculpting. Quads, quads, quads. that out as much as possible. Alright, alright. Get rid of some of these lines. Uh, over here we definitely wanted to add a little bit of more of that wrinkle that we see on the boots. That leather kind of folding over. And it goes into darkness in there somewhere. Alright, and then we'll push it across this way as well. Really, really smooth. And then we'll do uh, our big leather strap that will contrast all these things out. And some of this stuff will actually come, like, we'll, we're, we were pushing a little bit too far in, but um, the, the underneath default boot that we're hiding is actually gonna poke through a little bit. But that's okay, for this, for this part, it doesn't really matter. It's not gonna. It's not part of the bake or anything, so no big deal.
Okay, and then the top again just goes really smooth. So uh, what are we gonna do with that? Uh, we'll just move it out. Not super important to us. Did I check out uh, Vital Violet, uh, Vitalis work? I haven't yet, no man. I haven't. This guy's a little bit more on the plain side. Plain boots. Bit of a sketchy little sculpt here, uh, but now that we have that kind of figured out, uh, let me see actually our framework. See how close I got to that line. Oh god, where's the line go? That's the mirror line right there. Goes all the way up here, maybe. I think it goes all the way up here, but that's fine. I'll, we'll sculpt it just in case. That'll be okay. Okay, okay. Let's do a little bit of the cutout. Uh, for... The sole attachment to the boot. Yeah, it's just a guide. We'll make it look pretty in a bit. Uh, the new cinematic for Halo. Oh man, you don't want to hear what I think about Halo. I've never been a fan of those games. Okay. And while we're at this, uh, this should be a different mesh, shouldn't it? Really? Did I export it all as one? No. <laughs> Alright, so I forgot to put that as something separate, but that's alright. No big deal. I'll just clean this guy up. Whoops. This guy should definitely have been separate, but whatever. I can work with it.
All right, I'll fix that up in a bit. All right. Those volumes are a lot better than the super low poly stuff that we had. We just throw on, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of really cool shit that they do in those games, and some uh, more than anything, the weapon balancing and uh, the way that the weapons work is uh, even from Halo One. That was like the best thing that they've did and have done for since since then. Uh, they did an amazing job with uh, the way that the weapons feel and how they fire and how they work and th how they balance each other out. Uh, it's really, really cool. What's up, Nekrak? And Gadget, what's up? Welcome. Okay, uh, I guess we'll just sculpt in this, this strap now. Uh, I thought this thing was separate. It's really weird that I left that in there. I'm gonna try and hide part of it anyways. Just so that I can start sculpting this crazy strap. I guess we want to go fairly large with it too. A lot larger than... than the soul strap. I get it right here. As we rotate, make sure that the scale stays the same. Pushes across that way. We get the mirroring working. All right, so this is gonna be the tricky part. I have to make it work across this really weird fold. Just wanted to sit over top of it, but it's gotta be around this buckle that we had already placed. Because it's hiding the regular buckle from clinks. Be a little too large. Yeah, about that. And I'm gonna make it fold a little bit as it goes to this section here. And then we'll have it go across the top. That way we can make it really nice and visible and we can add those little cuts that it has and everything. Unfortunately, I have to unhide everything so that I can save ZBrush. I don't understand how that's a freaking thing, but whatever. UD, what's up, man? Welcome. Okay, I think we can go to our next subdivision, finish up the boots and work our way up to the, back to the coat and finish off the coat. So we're gonna we're gonna subdivide and we're gonna hide everything but the boots that we're working on. And same thing for uh, clinks over here. I'm gonna hide most of this crap. It's gonna get in the way. Oh, symmetry sound on this thing. Really? Okay. 
Okay, that was weird. Alright. Hey, yeah, if you see the boot underneath. Oh, it's not down there, where is it? What the hell? Oh, sea brush. I love you. Make me hide everything again. Come on, man. I really wish they would rework their layer subtool system. It's pretty bad. Alright, so if we go to this guy. So there's the default boot from Clinks. It's very elvish y kind of. And so, yeah, that's why we're making the boot really nice and run on the top. And at the same time, it, it, it can actually works in our benefit, because then it starts looking very, even more piratey, right? So we're kind of push those elements uh, quite a bit. At the same time as hiding the boot underneath, otherwise you'd see the little pointy there, you know, sticking out if we just did like a flat boot. But, both things. Both things will work. Alright, so now that we're at this subdivision, uh, we can start doing a little bit better job of <laughs> cleaning up these super crappy volumes and pushing in some of these wrinkles a little bit better. And I'll use the polish tool to really sculpt and give the the right shape to all these guys at the same time. And that's when you'll really start seeing a really nice shape come out for for, the, for this. Right now, it's still very um, conceptual. Uh, I can tell you one thing, Manny, this set gets in, I'm gonna use those boots for sure. If not the whole set. What, really? <laughs> Just the boots? <laughs> well, if you use these boots, you're also gonna be using the loin cloth and the coat. They're all part of the same item. So, ha! Whoops, a little too aggressive there, Sith. In this limit, the surrounding by that sparkle in the night. And because this is going to be mirrored to the right side, I probably don't want to do something as unique as this part right here that we got going on. Uh, so I'm going to actually fill in that space and go against our initial design for that little hole. It's going to be too visible right across the way. So i got to be careful with the stuff that you mirror and how different you made it, make it when uh, the mirror line is really nearby, really close. Yeah, that'll look better. And I'll point some of this flat sections a little bit farther up so that we get a much nicer specular map out of it. 
for the top view. Then with this part right here, I'm gonna flatten out the top and push, smooth that out. A little bit more of a stylistic kind of finish to this harsh uh, cloth material, leather material. That are the boots. And then we'll do some inking on top of this to really highlight some of the sections and maybe build them up a bit more wherever needed. What are we doing here? A bit of flatness to some of these sections. Uh, make sure we go right across the middle there where it's going to get mirrored. Nice little fold for the top of the boot. Uh, oh man, it's yeah. A tablet is way, way, way easier and better. You don't want to use a mouse for high poly stuff like this. Uh, the sensitivity and the pressure and uh, your wrist motions are a lot easier. With, with the tablet. I don't know, your first link worked out, like artbymanny.com without the www worked just fine, Elge. That's kind of weird. Hmm. Uh, you think there'd be any changes for the workshop for Dota 2 coming, uh, or with, uh, with Source 2 coming out? Uh, you know, I think some material stuff is going to be improved uh, a little bit later down the line. But I don't think anything's really going to change uh, for us in the way of like submitting things, or like, I don't... I don't think the polycan and all that stuff is really gonna change, because uh, then, well, I don't know. I'm kind of 50/50 whether they give us more polygons for the items. Uh, but in terms of textures and whatnot, I think all that stuff will stay around the same. So otherwise, uh, the character models will have like way lower, you know, texture space and all that. So I don't think that will change that much. But uh, in terms of the tools, they're gonna be releasing new tools. Uh, but again, that doesn't really impact on submitting things and the way that it really works, you know? So yeah, all that stuff should be about the same, man.
Oh, Seabrush. Fucking saving right now. Building this volumes up a little bit more now that we have more polygons. I think I want to bring this up a little bit more on this side. And a little bit higher along the edge. And I'll clean it up in a second here, make it nice and smooth. Accurate edges. And all that fun stuff. Uh, share a pick. Yeah, go for it, Mr. Forgetful. Hide the shit for a minute. Alright, uh, only one of the link works for some reason. Sapity, it is uh, an Intuos 4. Uh, let's see. Axor and No Jones play Bioshock. So this is for uh, like your Twitch stream or something? Uh, so if this is a thumbnail, and it's gonna be smaller than this, Uh, your font is getting really thin for a thumbnail. So you, for, for thumbnails, you usually want to use like larger, thicker fonts that are really easy to read. And also, you want to create some sort of like backdrop, uh, fog or drop shadow or glow uh, to really bring out either the font or the logos, the number or the character that you have on there. So I would push a fog back here that separates this four items from your background. Your background is really, really busy. So you want to dull that stuff out to really bring those things out. 
Uh, but yeah, there you go, man. Gonna flatten some of these sections for the boot, make them look a little more beat up and older, decrepit, older leather. I probably need to make those sections a little bit bigger, otherwise they won't even show up in the normal map, so I'm gonna exaggerate them. What the hell did I just do? That was weird. It went like crazy back into history. Sometimes seabrush, I don't know man. I don't know what the hell you're thinking. Stuff's gonna be tiny, so we are going a little more, bit more uh, stylized and kind of running through it a little bit fast. That's not super important. It's really, 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 really small. Alright, let's do the little cut that he's got on here. Uh, we have to worry about the mirror line as well, so let's see, where's the mirror line? Pretty sure it's right here. So I'm gonna do it a little bit just inside that. So like right over here maybe. 
add that little cut to the leather. And we'll make it even larger than what it's supposed to be, just so that we can see it for the tiny little clinks. We'll sketch that in there and then we're just gonna cut all this stuff out. Oh my god, what are you doing? Draw? I want to see draw. Just cut into it. We can take off the the wireframe. Uh, Mr. Forgetful donated two dollars. Thanks, man. Welcome, welcome back to the donation list for today, man. Going crazy the other day, man. Thank you. Appreciate the donation and you bringing up Sigourney Weaver, taking off her shirt. Is Pink Ninja still in here? She could tell you if that's that stuff uh, got shipped yet. Hmm. I wonder why the why it's killing all the met all the links. It might be some new setting that Twitch put across everything that I haven't looked into. Let me see. 